Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now, I know I've been gone for a while and that's true because I had a lot of stuff to do and I also, you know, didn't have a lot of ideas and there was just a lot of stuff going on. So, I'm sorry about that guys. But anyways, I just want to say uh, thank you guys for all of your support recently and here it is the movie for what if naruto had time warp if you have any ideas for what i should do next please do comment that down below and also subscribe because i'm trying to get to 1000 subscribers by the end of this year and with that let's get right into it Now, we start this what if off on the day of the Nine Tails attack. And so, this is gonna be right after Obito tried to steal Naruto, got destroyed by Minato, and now it's back to the Nine Tails. Now, the Nine Tails would, of course, try to stab or pierce, claw, claw Naruto, <laughs> um, but Kushina and Minato would throw themselves in the way, trying to block the attack. Now, Naruto seeing this as a baby is like, no, like, you know, even though he's just a baby and can't understand anything, he still understands that Minato and Kushina are his parents. And so, um, you know, he's just looking at them as they get stabbed through the stomach with a, uh, with the, 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 the thingy, the, 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 the claw, right? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't speak today. And then Minato, uh, in his last moments alive, ends up sealing the Nine Tails within Naruto using the Reaper Death Seal. And then seeing Minato drop to the ground dead, and Kushina on the ground as well, bleeding to death. And Naruto starts to cry and cry, as even with his puny little baby mind he can think no my parents they're they're dead as the realization hits him and suddenly his eyes open wide as they're glowing this whitish grayish color and it's almost like the the byakugan but like it's this really pale mm, eye as you know the people around Naruto, you know, who are just looking what's going on, are shocked looking at what eye this baby Naruto has. But before they could get any closer, um, Naruto started emitting, em emitting, emitting um, a crazy aura as he slowly lifted his hand up and just pointed his hand at um the area with where his parents were lying and suddenly uh they started to rewind and as he continued to do this the his parents just went back in time slowly uh, until it was right before the nine tails um was about to you know strike naruto but this time the nine tails wasn't there because uh, Minato had just uh, what it just sealed the nine tails within Naruto, and Minato would just stop being like, "Wait, but I just died," and he would look at the baby Naruto, who now of cr this crazy exhaustion has just passed out, as he would say, "Naruto, was that was that Naruto?" as he thinks about what just happened and looks at Kushina and then himself being like, wow, we're alive. It's almost like he sent us back through time, but he seems to be able to control this power. Since he only applied it to us, we went back through time, but the Ninetales didn't go back through time. So the Ninetales is still sealed within Naruto and, and me, because uh, because 
he split in half, right? And, you know, he's just thinking, like, wow, this is OP. He can literally, if Naruto learns to control his power, he can abuse the Reaper Death Seal just by, you know, using it and then having Naruto reverse it. And this way, he just, he, he's just, like, kind of, like, can kill anyone but can't die, you know? Uh, but anyways, uh, we move on. And we have a pretty long time skip. All the way until the age where Naruto was going to his first year at the academy. Now, you guys might be like, wait, but that's a lot of like, like, that's 8, 10 years that you just skipped. And I'll explain what happened in these years. Now, since Minato and Kushina are alive, Minato stays as the Hokage and Kushina is also alive. Now because of this, Minato being having like more than two brain cells manages to, you know, fire uh not fire but like remove Donzo from his position cuz everybody knows he's up to no good. So, you know, Donzo's not there anymore and without Donzo, nobody can, you know, say that Naruto has nine tails within him. And not only that, but since Naruto is the son of the fourth Hokage, um, you know, and everybody knows this, everybody actually likes Naruto. Now, another thing about Naruto is, um, you know, over this time, Minato has always trained at Naruto, and so is Kakashi, and they have taught him a lot of things from before, like, you know, he, by the time he went to the, started going to the academy, like, he was already maybe low tuning level or something like that. Because Minato in this time would have taught him the flying Raijin um, and a bunch of other jutsus, uh, basic knowledge, you know, studying. And so Naruto's a prodigy. Rem- remember that Naruto is an incredible prodigy. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that the Nine Tails was messing with him all the time, and since Minato can help him control the Nine Tails, and you know he's training a lot anyways, I bet he can master a bunch of Jutsu. So Naruto has the Flying Raijin, although he can only use one Flying Raijin mark at a time. So he can't just go full Minato mode and scatter a bunch of Flying Raijins a- across the entire area, uh, like Flying Raijin marks, and then just teleport between them not yet at least because he will be able to but yeah now this is when naruto heads off the academy to the academy and unlike in the original version of naruto people actually like him and uh the girls in the academy are fangirling over naruto as much as they are over uh sasuke and possibly they're fangirling over Sasuke, I mean over Naruto even more than Sasuke. Now, speaking of Sasuke, we come to the next big thing that the survival of Minato changed. Now, because Minato, uh, you know, knows what happened, and you know, Donzo and uh, Hirzen aren't in power as Hokage and Shadow Kage. And just generally, because Minato is alive still, the whole thing with the Uchiha massacre never happened. So, uh, you know, Itachi never went, uh, decided to kill his clan and go join the Akatsuki. And this means that Sasuke isn't actually emo. And since Minato and Fugaku are friends, um... You know, Naruto and Sasuke know each other pretty well. Like, they're, they're, they're pretty good friends, right? Um, so, yeah. Now, on the first day of school, Iruka decides that, you know, since it's the first day of school, it, it, you know, he wants to have a small little test sort of assessment to see what level everyone is at. Now, first, it's the written exam. Now, Naruto... Although isn't a big genius, he's actually like decently smart. So he does like pretty average on his test. Now, the written exam isn't where Naruto shines though. First, we have the shuriken and kunai throwing. 
And now since Naruto knows the flying Raijin, he already has a lot of kunai training, and except for that, he also already, like, you know, Minto already makes him do a bunch of, like, kunai and shuriken training. Um, so Naruto ties with Sasuke, getting a 9 out of 10, and, you know, Sasuke and Naruto already have this sort of rivalry. So, um, after this, they head off to the next part of the exam, the endurance exam, as they make them run laps around the, um, entire, like, schoolyard area to see who can run the most laps. Now, in this one, uh, Naruto and Sasuke once again tie at first place. And this kind of annoys the both of them. They keep tying at everything. And since they're kind of really competitive with each other, uh, they want to find the clear winner. Which is why that wish comes true in the final part of this, you know, um, little, ex not exam, but like this assessment of learning. An ass assessment for learning, it doesn't matter. Um, and... This is going to be the sparring. Now, this is when we have the fight between Sasuke and Naruto. They both head to their corners of the circle, and they start. At Right off the bat, they both rush in, using kaijutsu to fight each other. Now, off the bat, Iruka can tell that these two are already, like, way beyond Genin level when it comes to taijutsu skills, and, uh, you know, they they seem actually pretty experienced with Taijutsu. As you can see, both of them, you know, uh, fighting it out, blocking, jabbing, uppercut. You know, Sasuke does like a spinning uh, tornado kick. And then Naruto blocks it, ducks under, grabs his ankle, twists him around, and punches him in the stomach. But, you know, Sasuke does a backflip landing back on his feet. And this is when he starts... Uh, weaving hand signs and says fireball jutsu and um when he says this a huge fireball just comes out of his mouth as um naruto uh also starts weaving hand signs and says water style uh uh what is uh, a huge wave i literally made that uh jutsu up but I do that all the time, I'm not even going to say when I make jutsu up, you, you guys, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, um, just deal with it, if that isn't a real jutsu, too bad, but Naruto says, uh, water style, a uh, huge wave, as the wave and the fireball clashes, with, um, none of them exactly prevailing, now, after that, uh, Sasuke comes in throwing a bunch of shuriken and kunai at Naruto, but Naruto blocks with a mud wall. And uh, while he was creating this mud wall, he threw his flying Raijin kunai up into the sky. And um, he jumped out of the mud wall without going to his uh, flying Raijin mark quite yet. As he jumped up um, and said, you know, started weaving hand signs and said, uh, lightning style, lightning bolt, as a quick but generally effective zap of lightning just came down at Sasuke's direction as Sasuke was barely able to dodge although he got hit in the leg then the flying Raijin mark landed right behind Sasuke as Naruto immediately teleported uh, to it catching it and holding it to Sasuke's neck saying good fight but this time I won and Sasuke tr struggles to get out, but says, yeah, you did. Good fight. As, you know, Naruto puts his kunai into his pocket, and they do the the sparring symbol that they always do at the... It's kind of like the equivalent of a good game handshake, but like, for Shinobi, when they spar. And Iruka is watching this battle. Like, what on earth just happened? You know, because these two people who are literally barely now ac academy students on their first day are already, like, around tuning level, right? Which really surprised Iruka for a moment, but then he's like, I mean, 
he, he is the son of the fourth Hokage, and the other one is a talented Uchiha, little brother of Itachi himself. And, you know, he's just like, yeah, yeah, make, makes sense. And uh, after that, you know, uh, Naruto barely beats Sasuke overall in the score they got for their quick beginning of school year assessment, and then they go home. Now, this continues to happen for Naruto's almost entire time in uh, the academy. None of the things that they seem to be doing really, f- n- n- you know, Naruto never finds a lot of it challenging. Now, um, after he heads home, uh, Minato says, hmm, well, it's your first day at the academy and I, I feel like I want to introduce you to to a couple people, maybe they can train you. As you know, he um, he tells him to go find Shis- Shisui Uchiha and also where to find them. So with that, Naruto goes over to Shisui's house and asks him if he could train him. And Shisui just looks at uh, uh, Naruto, recognizing him to be the son of the fourth Ogage, and says, "Yeah." Sure, I can train you. And Naruto's like, yay, thanks. As, um, you know, uh, Shisui and Naruto go to an open area. As Shisui says, okay, well, well, let's just spar really quickly. I won't go my hardest, but just to see what level you're at right now. And Naruto's like, oh, um, okay. But try not to hold back, okay? As Shisui's like, yeah, I won't. I'll push you to your absolute limit to see uh, how much potential you truly have. As Naruto's like, finally, it sounds like I'll have a challenge. And with that, Shisui immediately rushes in. Remember, no Sharingan activated. And Naruto is completely shocked at Shisui's speed. I mean, Shisui at this point is faster than, um, you know, Naruto expected, but to be honest, he's kind of used to it because he sparred against people like Kakashi and his dad uh, Minato, who's like the fastest character in the series. So, you know, he's used to fighting people with high speeds, as he he knows that to fight speed, um, you mostly just have to play more passive aggressive until you get an opening and then you can strike. So as Shisui just rushes in, Naruto uh, starts uh, playing on the defense and immediately knows that he has to create some space between him and Shisui. So he creates a fireball jutsu, firing it straight at Shisui. Now Shisui is surprised at this being like, oh wow, he knows the fireball jutsu. Actually, you know, he's surprised but like only at how good he does it because he knows Naruto since he's Sasuke's friend. So he actually knows Nar- who Naruto is, and Naruto knows Shisui, but just not too much, right? Just They recognize each other, but they're not, like, friends, if you get what I mean. And, um, yeah. So Naruto fires a fireball jutsu at him, as Shisui doesn't even need to block it, because he just dodges out of the way and um, comes straight at Naruto. Little does he know, Naruto shot a flying Raijin kunai inside of that uh, fireball as he teleports to the kunai and manages to create some distance and then goes underground uh, using uh, the, I think it's called the head under jutsu, you know the one where you go underground and come up from underneath the person and so Naruto tries that but Shisui already knowing what's gonna happen jumps up when he sees Naruto and throws a kunai down at him and Naruto who also expected that Shisui expected that he was going to be there had already planted his kun- uh, flying Raijin kunai somewhere else as he teleported to it and then um, shot teleported to the kunai and used his lightning bolt jutsu, shooting it down at Shisui, but Shisui dodged it with nearly, um, you know, n- no trouble, as he ran uh, from the other direction once again at Naruto. Now Naruto, to 
out some kunai and some shuriken as he started throwing them at um at shisui but shisui activated this shining gun and easily dodged them coming in with his sword and in, in covering his sword in a fire style jutsu as he used the body flicker to get behind naruto before he could even react and um naruto seeing this was just like dang it as he barely threw his um kunai flying rising kunai up and behind shisui as he teleported to it catching it as he stabbed down at shisui as he poofed into smoke and the real shisui was right above naruto as um, Naruto saw it and realized that it was too late for him to react and how he said dang it dang it if only if only I could just push him away if he could go back this is like you know he's like you know hoping that Shisui just doesn't cut him as he instinct instinctively puts out his uh, hands to kind of like defend himself and He's like, no, I can't lose to him. Come on, come on. As suddenly, he opens his eyes again. As his eyes are pale. And suddenly, Shisui floats right back, like in the air. And goes basically, kind of like, imagine watching a video in reverse, right? Shisui is like, moving in reverse motion back to like, where he was 10 seconds ago. And Naruto's like, what's that power? I do. And Shisui's, uh, Shisui's just standing there satisfied as he's like, Finally. And uh, now you have uh, unlocked your true power. As uh, Naruto's like, Wait, what? And Shisui's like, That is the power you used on the day of the Ninetales attack. And that ability of yours saved your parents' lives. Naruto's like, Wow, this is this is kind of cool. I didn't know this had this ability. And Shisui's like, you know, I know because your parents told me that, like, you know, he knows that Shisui knows what happened because Minato told him, I guess. And you know, with that, Naruto's like, so what am I supposed to? How do I use this ability? And Shisui's like, how would I know? I mean, that's why you're here, isn't it? To train and get stronger. The reason I'm here is to help you hone down that ability and learn how to use it. But, you know, I can only direct you in the path you're supposed to go. But, you have to do the rest. Snarto nods, understanding it. She says, yeah, I get it. And, with that, Naruto heads home. And, you know, after that, every day, he comes back uh, to Shisui as they train together and also Naruto also trains with uh, Minato because uh, you know why not Minato can also train him and so he just trains with them honing down his time war ability now after that it's uh, it's finally the last day of the academy and Naruto easily passes the graduation exam I mean what did you think Naruto's not gonna pass well, Naruto is a prodigy, <clears throat> so when Iruka calls him up to do the Shadow Clone, Naruto goes up there and creates like 50 of them using the uh, sh multi Shadow Clone Jutsu technique, the one that was in the Sacred Scroll of Sealing. Now, if you guys are like, how on earth does Naruto know that? Because, well, um, Minato is the Hokage. Uh, scroll of Sealing is in the Hokage's office. Um, Naruto likes to learn, and um, like just just saying, Naruto knows about the scroll, and he may have peeked inside the scroll and saw some of the jutsu inside it. But he just used the multi shadow clone jutsu to create like 50 clones, and uh, Iruka's like, yeah, yeah, you pass. And with that. He announces their teams, saying that Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura are going to be on the same team with the Jonin Sensei of Kakashi Hatake. Now, this makes um, them happy because Sasuke and Naruto are friends, and they're like, yeah, we're on the same team, this is going to be so OP. 
because it is, it makes absolutely no sense to make this team. It's not balanced at all. Just makes this team way stronger than every other team. But no, it happens. Anyways, um, with that, they end up waiting for Kakashi for like a really long time because Kakashi never comes on time. And uh, after like two hours, Kakashi finally arrives. And Naruto's like, Kakashi, you finally arrived. Kakashi's like, Naruto, nah. You know, I got, and Naruto like, save the excuse, Kakashi. Just, what are we gonna do? Kakashi's like, yeah, meet me up on the roof. We're gonna introduce ourselves. And with that, they all go up to the roof, and they start introducing themselves. Sakura says everything she does in the original. Um... Naruto says also something very sim similar, as he's like, you know, I like ramen, I want to become the Okage and the strongest ninja ever, and Kakashi, who knows Naruto, because like, you know, Minato is Kakashi sensei, and Kakashi and Naruto have obviously met, um, so, you know, he knows him, and he's like, yeah, you know what, he might actually become the strongest shinobi in the world, and, um, yeah, uh, after that, this is the one that changes the most. Sasuke does his introduction, but instead of his normal emo thing, since Itachi is still, you know, in the village and hasn't killed his clan, he's, he actually gives a very different goal, saying, you know, I like training, um, and my goals are to become, uh, become the uh he literally says the same thing as naruto he's like you know i want to become the strongest person in the world or the hokage you know same thing um actually not the same thing he just wants to become the hokage and the strongest shinobi in the world as Nar naruto and uh, sasuke stare at each other and then smirk being like yeah i'm gonna become the hokage and sasuke like no i'm gonna become the hokage but anyways after that, Kakashi's like, yeah, well, tomorrow, you'll have to meet me at the training grounds at 7 a.m. sharp. And remember, don't eat anything, as he poofs into smoke. And before everybody can head off, Naruto's like, oh, by the way, uh, don't arrive at 7 a.m. Arrive at, like, um, 9 a.m., because he's obviously going to be two hours late. And also, um, you can eat if you want. And, and, also, also... Uh, tomorrow's test is gonna be about teamwork, so just keep that in mind. And Naruto knows this because, you know, Minato is the person who taught Kakashi the bell test, and Minato is Naruto's father, and Naruto knows both Minato and Kakashi, they both do the bell test, so he knows what Nar uh, Kakashi's gonna do when he says, meet me on the training ground. And with that, the next day, he heads off to the training grounds to do the bell test. So, last time we left off, Naruto and the rest of Team 7 were just heading off to the bell test, at least from what I remember. Um, and, you know, everyone ended up arriving there right on time, around 7, except for Naruto, because he knew that Kakashi was going to be late, so he decided, you know what, yeah, I'll, I'll just be late as well. So he came like about an hour late, and Kakashi came about an hour later than him. So, you know, Naruto came at around 8 a.m., and Kakashi came at, like, 9 a.m., and once again, everyone was about to ask Kakashi why it was so late, but they they couldn't even be bothered, as Kakashi introduced the bell test, saying how he had two bells, and what they had to do was to get the bells from him. It was that simple. Now, Sakura did immediately go ahead and point out that there were only two bells so they would probably one person would have to get out if you know this was to work and kakashi says yeah exactly one person's gonna go out and sakura's just like whoa mm, i feel like you know out of naruto and sasuke i feel like i'm gonna be the one going out as she's kind of like wait am i gonna become a genin again I mean, not. Just, am, can I, am I gonna be demoted? Because they're already getting, right? Um. Anyways, so Kakashi's just like, go, come on, go. And Naruto's like, okay. And uh, Naruto heads off into the forest. Now, immediately from the forest, he starts scouting out the area. 
seeing what he could possibly do. And then he thinks, oh, well, I've got an idea. And, you know, just so they can pass the test the way they're supposed to, he does tell Sakura and Sasuke that this is obviously about teamwork and that they should work together. And then, still, um, you know, Naruto's gonna be the one to get the bells, and Sakura and Sasuke are very hesitant about this, and, you know, aren't really like, you know, you're gonna get the bells? Uh, I'm not sure about that. And Naruto's like, okay, then you two can get the bells, which is obviously a lie, but, you know, he has to do it for them to cooperate. And then they're like, you know what, okay, if you're that confident, go, let's, let's go for it. And with that, all of them rush in at the same time from coming from opposite corners. Now, Sasuke and Naruto both run in at Kakashi with them starting to do taijutsu and everything. And um, this is actually like going pretty well since Sasuke and Naruto have trained together before. So they're actually really good at fighting together. And, you know, they've got good chemistry, they've got good teamwork, it just all works out. So they're actually pretty strong, uh, pretty decent against uh, Kakashi, and they start having a heated taijutsu battle. Meanwhile, Sakura is just on the sidelines, just trying to grab the bells at any open chance. Which isn't really working out wet too well, but it's, it's, it's what it is. As Naruto comes in from behind Kakashi and manages to hit Kakashi on the back. Now Kakashi's just like, wow, that was um that was actually a really weak hit. What like come on, that was that was oh, I don't what did he just do? That was a really weak hit. He didn't hit me that hard. And Naruto's like, whew, okay. As Kakashi is like, you know, turns around and he's like, what do you mean, okay? And uh Naruto's like Sasuke, now! As Sasuke starts weaving hand signs, it says, Fireball Jutsu, sending a huge fireball jutsu towards Kakashi. As Kakashi creates a mud wall, blocking the jutsu. But then, Naruto teleports to the flying Raijin mark that he placed on uh, Kakashi, because yeah, that's what the hit was. Instead of hitting Kakashi, he placed a flying Raijin seal on him. And teleporting to the flying Raijin seal, uh, Naruto pops up from the other side, and swings his arm at the uh, bells but he misses Kakashi is barely able to die. sorry guys the footage just keeps cutting out i'm telling you there are gonna, there are problems with the recording but anyways uh back to the story so kakashi barely manages to dodge out of the way and like naruto touches the bells but doesn't manage to get them this is when naruto says huh well that's all I needed. As Naruto uh, points his hand out at the bells, and suddenly the bells come back towards him from out of, like, you know, just levitate towards Naruto, and Naruto takes the bells in his hand. And Kakashi's like, wait, was that? And Naruto's like, yeah. You see, when I touch something, uh, I can bring it back in time and kakashi's like wow that must be it and naruto now you guys might be wondering wait wait, wait. he can bring time back like things back in time if he touches something and yeah that is true but but you guys are gonna be like wait a second but what about when he sent minato and kushina back in time right well the thing is Minato touched uh, Naruto when he saved him from Obito, and Kushina cu touched Naruto when, well, Naruto was born. So, Naruto had touched both Kushina and uh, Minato, so it does all make sense with the, you know, backstory and how Naruto sent them back through time. And so, yeah, that's kind of how his ability works. For now, you guys have no idea what's coming next. He has some crazy abilities. Because remember, he can warp time. A lot crazier than just going back in time. But anyways, on with the story. Kakashi's like, well, I guess you pass. After all, this was all about teamwork, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, Naruto, you got the bells anyways. So I guess I can't say much. 
And Naruto just gave a look at Sasuke and Sakura being like, See, I told you. And they're like, well, I mean, we, we never said we didn't trust you. We just said we weren't going to risk it. <laughs> um, and Naruto's like, okay, you do you. Anyways, after that, Team 7 became an official team and started going on d rank missions, such as, you know, catching cats, um, helping women with, like, not, just villagers, villagers with their groceries, helping... Just doing a bunch of very boring D rank missions, right? Now, this goes on for a while until Naruto goes to Hirazen's office and demands a harder mission. Hirazen, I mean, oh god. You know, this is what happens whenever I try to change try to change anything in the plot, right? Like, I, I replace Sakura with Nezuko in my Tanjiro What If, and I keep calling Nezuko ta- Sakura, and I keep forgetting it. This happens every single time. Anyways, they go to Minato's office, because Minato is the Hokage, and Naruto asks for a more difficult mission. Now, Minato, both knowing how capable Kakashi and Naruto is, a, he would obviously let them, right? And... Uh, he would say, yeah, there's a C-rank escort mission where you can escort Tazma to the land of waves. And hearing this, uh, Naruto and Team 7 would be like, yeah, that, that, that works. And so the next day, they would all meet up at the gate and head off to the land of the waves. Now, along the way, they would come across a puddle. And Naruto, unlike in the original, being actually smart, because Kushina makes him study a lot, of course, and Minato, of course, Minato is also smart. Um, you know, he notices the puddle, being like, you know, this 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 doesn't seem right. As he takes out one of his kunai, not the flying raijin one, but just a kunai, and throws it. Actually, no, his flying raijin kunai, right? Sorry, his flying raijin kunai takes it out, throwing it straight at the puddle. Now. The kunai hits one of the demon brothers in the shoulder as they both pop out and suddenly just go straight to attack Naruto. And Naruto just stands there calmly being like, hmm, I knew it. And Naruto teleports to the flying Raijin um, mark. And, you know, the, the, the kunai being lodged onto one of the demon brother's shoulders, he just teleports to it, grabs it, touches the demon brother and uses his time warp ability to send him back through time into his genjutsu puddle while naruto uses his um you know pulls the flying raijin kunai out of his shoulder and uses the kunai um to slice the throat of the other demon brother killing him and then naruto uh, goes back at the demon brother who's now sent back in time to when he was still in the puddle and you know he's like what just happened and you know this guy teleported then did some sort of weird time manipulation thing and he killed my brother and now he's about to kill me so he jumps back out as one last hope and naruto just throws the kunai at him and he dodges but this was naruto's plans all plan all along so he just teleports to the kunai and starts charging a blue orb in his hand as he says rasengan and turns around slamming it into the demon brother's back completely knocking him out and yes he does know the rasengan because like he has been living with minato and training with jiraiya do you not expect him to learn the rasengan at this point like come on um but yeah that is the demon brothers completely obliterated right naruto is not someone to be messed with since he is already like chunin slash jonin level at this age because you know when you're being trained by the hokage and a sanin and one of the strongest jonin who will become the hokage in the future aka kakashi being trained by shisui you know, you, you you tend to get pretty strong, especially if you also have a time warp ability. You get what I mean? Y- you, do you understand what I mean? But they he- keep heading on, and suddenly a huge thick mist starts rolling in. Now, of course, Zabuza 
uh, comes in being like, you know, this is the hidden mist, village. I don't know what you're expecting. Like, this is where you'll find the mist. It's pretty normal around here. And uh, Naruto and Team Seven are like, yeah, yeah, that 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 makes sense. But this is when Kakashi senses a huge blade flying overhead as he says, duck, and everyone ducks as the huge blade um, lands on the tree and Zabuza Momochi lands on it. Now, Naruto seeing this is like Zabuza Momochi under his breath and Kakashi's like, hmm, looks like Naruto's been keeping up, uh, like checking his bingo book and Naruto's like, I know this guy. He's the demon of the mist, one of the seven uh, deadly swordsmen. Uh, and Naruto, uh, Kakashi is just like, okay, leave him to me. And with that, Kakashi and uh, Zabuza start fighting, and everything goes just like in the original, with Kakashi getting stuck in the water prison, and then. Uh, Naruto and Sasuke do the exact same thing with the demon wind shurikens with Naruto popping out of his demon wind shuriken transformation and turning around to uh, kick Zabuza in the back now this is when Zabuza has to release the uh, water prison jutsu from being kicked in the back like that and uh, Naruto lands on the water water walking of course because Naruto knows that and Kakashi swiftly finishes Zabuza off using a water dragon jutsu. Then, Naruto, knowing that Kakashi probably, I mean, Zabuza probably isn't dead yet, runs in and tries to kill Zabuza with his flying kunai, uh, flying rising, flying kunai, wow, flying rising kunai. But Zabuza, I mean, Haku interferes, saying that he's attracting Mist Ninja and takes a uh, Haku, I mean, Zabuza, so quickly that Team 7 doesn't even have time to question him. This is when um, Kakashi normally would have passed out from uh, exhaustion and, you know, chakra exhaustion, that sort of stuff. But since Minato is alive, I don't think uh, that Kakashi would have been this, you know, he wouldn't have been slacking off during the entire time, you know, he would have been training his Sharingan, in fact, I bet he would, you know, be able to use his Mangekyo Sharingan, like, genuinely speaking, he would probably be able to use his Mangekyo Sharingan at this point, he just didn't want to use it this, uh, this battle, and so, with that, they head off to Tazuna's house, now, at Tazuna's house, once again, they have their meal, they eat their stuff, whatever, you know, what, they eat whatever they eat, it doesn't, they just eat all the food there, ha, get some rest, and the next day, uh, yeah, but, 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 K- 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 Kakashi decides to teach them water walking and tree walking to those who don't know it. Now, Sasuke knows tree walking but not water walking, so Kakashi's gonna teach him water walking, and Sakura's gonna learn tree walking, and water walking if she has time afterwards. Now, uh, Sasuke manages to learn water walking, and Sakura manages to learn tree walking, but Naruto already knew both of them, so he was doing some more advanced chakra control and meditation, and, you know, just going into his mind space, uh, talking with Kurama, that sort of stuff, you know, doing stuff that would be more useful for him than learning something that he already knows. Anyways, you know, that's just kind of how the entire time goes there, and after a bit of time, they decide to go and help Tazna, uh, Tazna, yeah, Tazna help the bridge, uh, help build the bridge, and with uh, Naruto and uh, Team 7's help, Tazuna starts building a bridge a lot quicker. Naruto can use his Shadow Clone Jutsu to um, make the construction go a lot faster, and also just having more people is helpful, I guess. And uh, Kakashi, I guess, 
actually no that wouldn't be helpful but you know just having more people and naruto shadow clone jutsu would help them uh do the construction a lot quicker now gato would notice this increased construction working speed and order zabuza and haku to go kill them immediately and so one day when team seven was working on the bridge suddenly zabuza and haku showed up with kakashi being like i knew it i wasn't tracking miss ninja and naruto was like why didn't you just say so? I mean, I could have just warp, uh, warped him back in time all the way to when he was still at the pond, and um, th- that would have been pretty. That would have been that. Like, you know, Naruto could just, since he touched him, he could have warped him back to that area, and then they could have killed Zabuza. But Kakashi was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And so Kakashi's like, wait, but you still, you can still control him, right? Since you've touched him. And Naruto's like, yeah, I, need, I only need to touch them once. And after that one touch, I can control, uh, control them through time. Well, uh, yeah, I can basically control them through time for 10 years. And Kakashi's like, yeah, that, that, that's actually pretty impressive. <laughs> So, Kakashi's like, okay, well, listen, I won't need your help, most likely, but try to put touch both of them, and we can use your power just in case. It'll always be useful. And Naruto's like, yep, of course. Now, just so you guys know, Naruto's uh, time warp thingy also works on objects, right? And that, that can, Naruto can basically control anything for 10 years, in a 10 year like how do i explain this so of course naruto can control someone he touches for 10 years and uh if he controls them you guys might be like okay well then why doesn't he just speed things up so the person gets really old and dies or uh makes them really young and turns them into a baby he can but he can only make them 10 years younger or 10 years older Also, this ability works on objects, too. So, if Naruto finds a rock that was, well, I don't know, just created somehow, and he warped it back through time, he could go, he could make it go back to when it wasn't created, since it was just newly created. I don't know if you understand, but you don't have to. You'll see when he uses the ability. And you guys probably already know what he's about to do. So Kakashi decides to go fight Zabuza, and Naruto and Sasuke decide to go fight Haku. Now, during Sa- Haku and uh, Naruto's fight, Sasuke and Haku start getting into a heated taijutsu battle. And this is going, you know, pretty evenly until Haku decides to speed up, seeing that Naruto is about to join the fight. With that, Haku starts overpowering Sasuke, and Sasuke starts needing more help. This is exactly what Naruto is here to provide, though. And Naruto is also a lot faster than Sasuke, so um, he starts keeping up with Haku. As he also starts using his uh, flying Raijin kunai, just very, um, very little, just like once, right? He uses it once and om- sliced a little bit of um haku's you know uh arm just a small cut on it but couldn't do much now haku started to feel like he like he was starting to lose so he decided that he had to do something and naruto went at haku trying to hit him but haku suddenly created a bunch of ice mirrors and Naruto and Sasuke were both trapped inside of it saying, wait, what is this? As suddenly, Haku went into the mirror and then appeared in all of them. As Haku I was just, you know, staring at Naruto and Sasuke through all of the mirrors. And Naruto and Sasuke were like, what the heck is this? As Sasuke uses his fireball jutsu, it doesn't work. And Haku just laughs, saying, You thought that would work? <laughs> It'll take a lot more to destroy my ice mirrors. And Naruto says, Yeah, well, too bad. Because, you know, I have exactly that. 
you know, a lot more than, like, I have exactly what is required to destroy your ice mirrors. As he uh, goes up to Haku, and Haku's just like, get away, as he starts throwing Senbon at Naruto. But Naruto starts dodging the Senbon. Although not with a lot of ease, he can do it. But he is having a lot of trouble approaching the mirrors because the closer he gets to the mirrors, the closer it is to, uh, the harder it is to avoid the kunai. So, I mean the senbon. So Naruto comes up with another plan. Naruto runs up to the mirrors, well, just a little bit, then jumps back right back to the middle, right? While at the same time, so like he's like almost touching the mirrors, he jumps backwards while at the same time throwing his flying Raijin kunai right at the mirror. And Naruto lands right back in the center and blocks the kunai coming at him while he teleports uh, to his flying Raijin kunai. Unfortunately, the flying Raijin kunai isn't enough to break through the mirrors, obviously. And Haku's like, what are you trying to do? As, you know, Haku's about to say this as Naruto tries punching the mirror with his fist punching trying to punch at least straight through it but it doesn't work and he gets blasted back right into the middle now this is when haku says huh well check you're in a terrible position there's no way you'll win as you can see you're stuck naruto says well that might be what you think, but it's not the truth. And Naruto lifts his hand up as uh, suddenly his eyes once again go a pale white color. As suddenly all of the mirrors start slowly but surely disintegrating into nothingness. And Haku is like, what, what was that power? Sudden, such an immense aura and pressure after his eyes turn that pale white color. His hands start to glow and it just destroyed my mirrors. Sorry guys, I had to cut the v- footage, but back to the video. So Naruto just looked down as this immense aura continued to like almost spiral around him as he pointed his hand at Haku this time. And Haku started going back in time, all the way uh, back to when Haku and Zabuza had first appeared in, well, on the bridge. And as Naruto sent uh, Haku back in time to that position, he, uh, he got Haku to the position and then displayed his newest power. As his eyes, uh, you know, turn this white color the aura of this power completely exploded around him and haku was just shocked at this moment as naruto pointed his palm at haku and then it happened haku completely froze in time and haku just couldn't move as he was like dang it what is this some sort of genjutsu as Naruto slowly and dramatically walked towards Haku and killed him, cutting his throat with a kunai. And at this exact moment, Kakashi would be slamming his chidori through Zabuza's chest. And with that, Zabuza and Haku would have been dealt with. But just as this happened, um, Gato and his men ended up arriving. And Naruto, seeing this, was slowly starting to have his aura fade away. And he was like, dang it, more people to deal with. Well, I guess it won't be much of a problem. As he activates his shadow clone jutsu, creating a bunch and a bunch of clones, with Kakashi doing the same. And as their clones rushed in at the mercenaries, and started killing them one by one, easily, very easily. Um, 
every, all of the mercenaries just decided to run away. You know, they just got back on their boats, went right back. You know, they just all started running away. Meanwhile, Gato, being the absolute idiot he is, just continued standing there, being like, you cowards, I'll deal with them myself. But that wasn't true, because Naruto just took Gato and gave him to the villagers. And since Gato had done some terrible things to them, uh, Naruto, you know, just gave it to them so they could do whatever they want to Gato. And trust me, it, it <laughs> things aren't looking good for Gato. <laughs> But with that, the bridge got named the Great Naruto Bridge, and Team 7 went back to the Leaf Village. Now, at the Hokage's office, uh, Kakashi and Naruto, you know, explained the true nature of the mission, and how it was, you know, at least B or A rank, and Zabuza hearing about what Naruto was able to do during this mission was very impressed, and was like, cool, he's finally starting to... You know get a hold of his power and with that you know Minato paid them appropriately and they all went off now along the way Kakashi stopped them and said also before you go one last thing do you guys want to participate in the tuning exams and um and team seven obviously accepted so last time we left off team seven had just come back from the land of the waves and kakashi was telling them about the tuning exams now hearing about this naruto and the rest of team seven obviously all said yes because they had no reason not to i mean like if they can become a tuning which especially naruto knows they're capable of there's no reason for them to decline the offer so after this, they all got to have this one week of uh, resting and training. Now, Naruto used this week to go back to Shisui and explain to him all that happened. Now, Shisui was just said that, you know, uh, he knew what that he probably had that sort of power within him you know that sort of ability to go into that mode but he never knew that naruto would also be able to stop people in time and naruto was like yeah is there do you think is there if there's any way i can control this power and shisui just said yeah probably but gonna need it's gonna need some work and with that they got the training with naruto and shisui and well minato at times as well they just naruto just trained with them day and night and another thing is sasuke is actually a lot stronger in this what if because um because of the fact that well itachi is alive and you know, Itachi gets to train Sasuke, Sasuke becomes a lot stronger. And anyways, with that, we continue to the first day of the tuning exams. Now, at this point, the only person on uh, their team that isn't already tuning slash joning level would be Sakura. Because Sakura is well useless like always and um so they walk in obviously with both naruto sasuke and sakura noticing the genjutsu and telling the person to take it down now uh the man would just be like yeah and why should i do that as he ran started dashing at naruto taking his fist out to punch naruto but naruto all he did was he threw, uh, he, he didn't throw, he tossed his flying Rujin Ruj, kunai into the air and teleported to it, catching it, and held it to the um, person's neck. And he just stood there, having just seen Naruto teleport, disappear, and appear behind him 
Holding a kunai to his neck, he said, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I, I'll, I'll take it down. As Naruto's like, yeah, you'd better. And so they took down the genjutsu. And he, after Team 7 went upstairs, he took off his disguise and was like, wow, this year's chunins are, I mean, genins are pretty powerful. I feel like they'll make it to chunin level. And, you know, this is true because Naruto is absolutely OP, but they don't know about Orochimaru's plans because, you know, Orochimaru's, uh, you know, he has his plans, right? And, yeah, with that, they go upstairs, meeting Rock Lee. Now, Rock Lee goes uh, right at Naruto, being like, Naruto Uzumaki, I want, actually, Naruto Uzumaki or Naruto Namikaze since people know- You know what? Let's just say Naruto Uzumaki because I'm not gonna be able to remember that. So he's just like, Naruto Uzumaki, I am Rock Lee and I challenge you to a battle. And Naruto's like, hmm, you're Rock Lee, right? And Rock Lee's just like, you, you know my name? And Naruto's like, yeah, of course. You're one of the greatest taijutsu users in this village. And Rock Lee is like, Wow, somebody recognizes me. I, I'm, um, you know, he just, Rock Lee is like, Wow, the, the Hokage's son recognizes me. He knows who I am. This is amazing. And Naruto's like, Look, I understand you want to fight, but if you're truly strong enough to fight me, then I bet you'll make it to the final stage of the tuning exams. We can fight there. And Rock Lee is like, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, oh my god. I, I'm, I, my Rock Lee voice is so bad. I, I'm sorry, guys. <sighs> but anyways, so with that, Team 7 goes over to the first part of the tuning exams, where they see Ibiki. Now, Ibiki introduces the first part of the tuning exams, explaining how this is going to work, where this is the written exam, uh, and they're going to get nine questions, they have to answer at least one of them, if they get caught cheating five times, they're out, etc, etc. And with that, everybody gets to work. Naruto, being actually really smart, uh, manages to use his brains uh, to answer a lot of the questions and since he's so smart he also manages to figure out that this they're supposed to cheat but Naruto doesn't really need to cheat so that uh, the time goes by everybody who gets caught cheating gets eliminated and with that Ibiki announces the 10th question saying how either they decide to take the qu tenth question, get it right, and pass, or they take the tenth question, get it wrong, and get barred from ever taking the tuning exams ever again. And um, or and he says, or you can just not take it and come back next year. And Naruto, being confident in his abilities, and so uh, same thing for. Sasuke and for uh, Sakura, they decide to stay. And after everyone who's gonna leave leaves, Ibiki says, Okay, well, you pass. You see, the tenth question was actually a tactical deception where I tested your abilities as a ninja because a true ninja never would have blah blah blah. blah. You know, he does his whole thing. And everyone's like, Oh, so there's no tenth question. Oh, well, um, I guess we pass. And, you know, Ibiki's still explaining how, you know, a ninja, a true, uh, tuning level ninja should never, and Anko just, um, goes smashing in through the window as she's like, Okay, come on, to the forest of death, we've got another part of the tuning exams to do. And Ibiki's like, ugh, didn't even finish yet. And Anko's like, yeah, well, to me it looks like they finished their uh, tests. Like, they don't really need to hear you talking about random stuff. Come on, everybody, let's go. And Ibiki's just like, you know, Uncle, there's a door for a reason. And Uncle's just like, N Ibiki, look, you don't, you don't always have to be boring, okay? And 
Maybe he's just like, you know what? I never mind. I, I've got better stuff to do. As he just goes home. This is when we move on to the second part of the tuning exams. And this is where Onko explained the rules, saying how they're gonna get one scroll and they have to get another scroll. Killing is in fact allowed, and that's all. You just have to make it to the center tower with two scrolls by the end of the time limit. And uh, after everyone signs their uh, um, signs the forms saying that it doesn't matter if they die, which is kind of weird. Like, why would you sign that? But yeah, I mean, it makes sense if you want to become a tuning, you have to sign it. So, sign it, I guess. Um, and yeah, afterwards, everybody heads to the gates, and Anko uh, says, "Everybody, go!" And everyone runs in. To the forest of death. Now, you guys might be saying that, well, Orochimaru wouldn't be here, because since Itachi's not in the Akatsuki, Orochimaru would be going after Itachi. And to an extent, this is correct. But Orochimaru at this point already knows Itachi's power, has already attempted to take Itachi's body, and has already failed. Uh, understanding how powerful Itachi truly is, so he decided to go for a simpler option. Get Sasuke. I mean, it's the same thing, but just younger. Possibly even more potential, because reasons. Um, but yeah, so Sa Orochimaru ends up showing up, uh, and, you know, he's just like, Sasuke, just like in the original, he's doing his um, weird, creepy uh, thing, and Naruto's like, God, who is this, as Naruto looks at, uh, I mean, Orochimaru looks at Naruto, and he's like, hmm, and Naruto, well, looks like I've found myself a good pair, and you know, he's like, okay, well, I guess I can put the curse mark on these two. And he's about to head in to fight them, but Naruto's like, oh no, you don't. As he runs in at Orochimaru, immediately uh, going in and using the lightning spear jutsu to try to get a hit on Orochimaru. But Orochimaru manages to dodge, ducking and coming in from underneath with a... Uh, a bunch of kunai and shuriken. Naruto acts fast, taking out his flying raijin kunai, ru flying rujin, <laughs> and throws it at Orochimaru. Orochimaru uh, sees the kunai coming and is like, huh, you think that can that is enough to hit me? And Naruto's like, no, as he teleports to the kunai, taking it, turning around, and slamming a Rasengan straight into Orochimaru's back. This heavily um, damages Orochimaru as Orochimaru's like, damn it, I wasn't expecting that. Should have been more careful. This is the fourth Okage son after all. And he, Orochimaru now takes his disguise off. So Naruto's like, dang it, this is Orochimaru, one of the legendary Sanin. And Orochimaru this time runs in once again at Naruto. Naruto continues trying to use his abilities, but Orochimaru just has the upper hand as he uses his huge snake jutsu as the snake comes in and eats Naruto whole. Now, Naruto manages to use the shadow clone jutsu to, you know, man just get out of the snake. But when he gets out, he looks and sees Sasuke and Orochimaru, with Orochimaru extending his neck and biting Sasuke's neck. Suddenly, a black mark appears on Sasuke as Orochimaru runs away, saying, hm, that was easy. And, Oro and Sasuke just falls to the ground and says, damn it. And let my guard down. He he bit me, and this weird mark appeared on me. As you know, Sasuke is on the brink of passing out, and Naruto immediately rushes to his side. He says, "Wait, 
Dang it, I, I shouldn't have gotten trapped by that snake. I would have been able to save you. As saying this, he gets an idea. He's like, oh, wait a second. I think I know what might work. I've never tried this before, but just maybe, just maybe this, this might work. I've discussed this with Shisui and there is a possibility as he puts his hand um, out towards Sasuke as Sasuke starts going back in time and Sasuke in reverse stands up goes back to the position he was right before Orochimaru attacked as the bite mark on Sasuke's neck disappears as so does the curse mark as, Oro as Naruto sent uh, Sasuke back in time to before he got the curse mark, essentially curing him of the curse mark. As um, Sasuke looks at Naruto and says, Wow, thanks. I, I didn't think you could do that. And Naruto's like, yeah, this is pretty cool. And Sakura's like, whoa, what are the extents of this power? Can you just heal people from the dead? Naruto's like, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe. And for those of you wondering, if somebody is dead, Naruto cannot bring them back to life by sending them back in time. Because, and you guys might be like, why? And if he does this, right, they will go back in time, right? Their body will go back in time to like right before their death. Let's say like, when they were standing up but you know they'll go back to that time but they'll still be dead right so then their body will fall back down because they didn't they, they, you can't revive them right you, he can still send their bodies back in time but he can't revive them if that makes any sense but with that they get the scroll they need because i'm not even gonna go over it because team Seven's too op and i just don't feel like it and after getting the, their scroll they head off to the area and well wait for their results and wait for everyone else to come in anyways eventually everyone arrived and the proctor announced that there would have to be preliminaries because well too many people passed now the first match of the preliminaries would be sasuke versus the guy who can steal chakra and i think his name is yuroi something like that and um Naruto, I mean Sasuke would absolutely destroy him because he doesn't have the curse mark, which would surprise both Kabuto and Yoroi because, you know, from what Orochimaru said, he should have had the curse mark by now, but he doesn't, so, uh, I mean, they're not gonna mind it, but anyways, uh, he wins Naruto uh, versus Kiba, though. This is absolutely like naruto destroys kiba right basically kiba walks in being like you know i'm gonna beat naruto and prove my strength and everybody will respect me and then i can become a hokage and naruto's just saying like okay well kiba's about to get destroyed so basically kiba ran in straight at naruto right and immediately used his fang over fang ability now naruto being smart and just well abusing uh flying raijin because he can like it's just too op um he just throws the kunai up into the air just tosses it up and before he uh kiba can even attack and as the kunai starts falling back down um uh, kiba attacks naruto not seeing it and uh, Naruto just teleports to the kunai, landing right above Kiba as he says, hm, I'm lucky, that was perfect timing. And he, he punches Kiba in the back, slamming him into the ground. Now, Naruto pos goes into a position and he says, here, this is right about it. This should be, this is, should be the right area. As he was like, damn it. As he says, fang over fang, this time I'll hit you. And he goes in at Naruto again. But Naruto just extends an open palm. As his eyes 
turn once again a pale color as Akiba just starts going back in time before the fang over fang and the previous fang over fang as he goes back right back to when he first entered the arena and Naruto's like nice right now as he uh, takes the Rasengan in his other hand and slams it straight into Kiba knocking him out and effectively winning the match now Kiba's like what was that power he, it was like telekinesis but he sent me back in time that was crazy there was nothing I could do about that and Naruto just smirks as he walks off in the Rock Lee vs. Gara match, Gara once again beats Rock Lee, although Naruto does stop Gara just in time before uh, Gara can, you know, completely crush Rock Lee's leg. Anyways, with that, the Proctor announces that, well, the people who passed passed, and uh, says that they're gonna have one entire month to train. And Naruto hearing this is like, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, Naruto just goes off for his training period. Sorry guys, I had to cut there. Um, but, 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 but anyways, after this, Naruto went <coughs> to see Shisui. Because, well, Naruto has already trained with a Jiraiya in the past, and already has a summoning jutsu, so it doesn't need to train with Jiraiya. And basically, what he does is he goes to uh, Shisui, and they get back to training. Naruto explains his potential healing power, and explains how he can potentially heal any wound. And um, just Shisui hearing this is like. Any wound, you say? Could it possibly heal a disease too? And Naruto hearing this is like, what do you mean? I mean, yeah, p- p- probably. As um, sh- uh, th- th- Shisui says, interesting. Follow me. And Naruto, not understanding what's going on, follows him as they go over to Sasuke's house. And uh, Shisui comes in and asks if Itachi is here, and to his luck, he is. They he was basic he was just standing there talking with Sasuke that sort of stuff, and Shisui came in and said, "Itachi, come here, we have to talk." And so they went outside, and they went to a place where nobody can see, as uh, Shisui said so. Remember your illness, and uh, so our friend Naruto here. Apparently, he has an ability that can heal any injuries or wounds by sending the person back in time. Turns out, you he can't. His only ability isn't just to send their bodies back in time, but also reverse, um, you know, reverse their bodies in time as well. So, you know making them younger or older as Itachi hearing this is like so you mean yeah I mean it and Itachi says okay well it's worth a shot Naruto try sending me back about three years and now guys before you like roast me in the comments or anything I don't know when Itachi got his disease. It, they probably said something about it in the anime, but I, I couldn't have been bothered to to watch it or remember it. So, um, let's let's just say he got it about like two and a half years ago. So, he tells Naruto to send him back three years, and Naruto's like, I don't know if I can do that. And Itachi says, just just trust me. And Naruto says, but your body will go all, all over the place. We, I, I have no idea, no way of controlling whether your body can stay or not. Um, 
I mean, Itachi says that. Itachi, not Naruto. Itachi says that. Itachi says, but wouldn't my body just go wherever since you're sending me back in time? And sorry, not Naruto. Itachi says that, and Naruto says, no. That's exactly why I've been training on that. I can keep you in one place by and just reverse your body through time, without moving it. And Itachi says, wow, you're really improving fast, aren't you, Naruto? Naruto says, yeah. As he puts his hand on Itachi, um, and just his eyes once again turn a pale color, as suddenly Itachi's body goes back through time, getting younger, faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, until all he suddenly he's three years younger. He gets a little bit shorter, but nothing too major. Because Itachi at this point was, you know, already already pretty old, I guess, and um, and I guess now he's three years younger, but he's still o- older than Sasuke by uh, quite a bit, I guess. And you know, he hasn't lost any of his skill, right? His he he's slightly maybe a little bit out of condition. Just slightly, maybe, because his body went three years back in time, but this is still the Itachi we all know and love, right? Anyways, with that, um, you know, Naruto spends the rest of this month just training. And after that, Naruto is finally ready for the final part of the tuning exams. So, last time we left off, Naruto was just heading to the final part of the tuning exams. So, we skip all the way to Naruto walking into the arena. And basically, um, you know, he walks in, sees everyone, uh, sits down, and realizes, oh, I'm sitting down. I'm I'm, I'm literally, like, the, um, going first. Like, why did I sit down? And since Naruto's feeling lazy, he decides, you know what? Let's show off real quick to everyone. As Neji stays down there being uh, you know not forgetting that he's going up first and just waits there being like huh that idiot went all the way up like you know you're not you're not going to be watching any games we're going up first naruto's like okay as he controls himself through time which he can do as he reverses himself in time and um puts himself to um to the position he was beforehand and now he's like Yo, this guy can fly? Because he, he doesn't understand Naruto's ability. And Naruto's like, okay, well, Neji, before we start this match, just wanna shake your hand, you know. I I just have to before I have the game. It's just a sort of like respect sort of thing. And Neji, not understanding what's going on, is like, okay, I guess. As he shakes his hand. And he's like, but you should know that I'm going to win this because I'm destined to win this. And I am blah, blah, blah. You know, Neji does his entire boring speech about how he's destined to win this. And Naruto couldn't care less because at this point, he did everything he had to do. And he has touched Neji now. So Neji is done for. And the guy says, start. And, um... So Neji runs straight at Naruto, saying, 8 trigrams, 64 palms, and he starts attacking Naruto. But for some reason, he just feels slow. And, you know, he finishes his attack, but only a quarter of his attacks actually managed to land on Naruto, because for some reason, he just couldn't move at full speed. Naruto looked down and smirked, as he said, you think you're gonna win, aren't you? As Neji's like, yeah, of course I'm gonna win, as he moves in with his gentle fist and tries striking Naruto. Naruto just um, takes a flying Raijin kunai, throwing it behind him and teleports to him. As um, Ned, he holds it right to Neji's, to the back of Neji's neck, pointing the tip at, you know, Neji's back as he's like, so. Looks like I've got you in quite a predicament, haven't I? You gonna give up yet? As Neji's like, huh, you wish. Guess what? I have another move. As he says, rotation! But he can't move. 
She's like, wait, I, I can't move. What is this? And he can't speak as he's just stuck. He can't move as suddenly he feels this immense aura coming from behind him as from just the side of his eye with his peripheral vision he can see uh, Naruto with his eyes a pale color and just this whitish aura just surrounding him as Naruto lifts up his uh, has his hand lifted up pointing at Neji as he says Neji Hyuka you think you're so strong. <laughs> I feel bad for you. As he starts punch barraging Neji. Punch after punch after punch after punch. And the people are looking at in awe, being like, Neji is moving. Naruto's punching him so hard, but Neji's just frozen there. And, uh, you know, Naruto keeps on kick after punch after kick. As he says, and for my finishing move... Rasengan as he slams it into Neji's back finally releasing him from his state frozen in time as Neji because he was frozen in time his body couldn't actually get all of those hits from Naruto punching him but the instant Naruto released him from his state frozen in time all of those kicks and punches he landed earlier registered at the same time so to Neji it felt like he got kicked 100 and kicked and punched 100 times and got Rasengan at the same time. And from that immense pain, he just immediately passed out. And with that, Naruto won his match. And this is when we move on to the next match. As this is right when uh, Naruto, I mean Sasuke and Gar, well, not the next match, but we skipped the Naruto versus. Gara versus Sasuke's match. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm, I just can't speak today. Gara versus Sasuke's match. And um, Naruto just waits on the field for a little bit. Because he has a little plan in mind, right? And, um, you know, he sees Naruto, uh, Sasuke coming down. And he's like, good luck. And also, Gara comes down as well. As Naruto um, just brushes his arm against Gara's just slightly bumping into him. Scar's like, watch where you're going. As he shoots sand at Gara, But Naruto just uses a flying Raijin mark that he had already thrown up up to the roof. Because roof, because he knew Gara would do this. So the instant Gara tries attacking him with sand, he looks back and sees Naruto's gone. So he just ignores it and he says, I'll get you for that. As he moves on to the field, and the match between Gara and Sasuke begins. Now, uh, this starts off with um, the whole thing, where they start fighting, and Gara creates his ultimate dome thing, and Naruto, I mean Sasuke, goes back, gains momentum, uses Chidori, pierces through it, and stabs Gara. This is when Naruto um, kind of just senses that a genjutsu a attack is coming and you know he he's good enough to release himself from the genjutsu and he doesn't fall for it as the instant this happens um he's like i knew something like this would happen as he points his hand out uh out towards uh, Gara, as Gara is in his half transformed state with Tamari and Konkuro trying to bring him, uh, having, you know, trying to ex escort him away. As he just points his hand in Gara's general direction where he went off, and Gara slowly just drifts back to him, back through time. And Tamari and Konkuro just chase back after Gara, being like, What's going on? As Naruto uh, puts Gara back into the position, freezes him in time, and tells Sasuke and Sakura to deal with um, Gara as Naruto just continues to hold him frozen in time, and Sakura and um, Sasuke, combined with the efforts of some other Jonin, manage to um, not only just trapped, trap Gara so he can't move or can't do anything, and they not they just like make sure he's completely immobilized and trapped and he can't move. And then they also end up capture, capturing Tamari and Konkuro. So 
Gara never gets to transform into his full Shikaku state. And while they're trying to handle that, Naruto goes off because he felt his dad, um, his dad fighting Orochimaru. And so with that, seeing, um, seeing Orochimaru and Minato fighting up on top of a roof, he's like, huh, well, not like Orochimaru will be able to be father anyways, but I guess I can go help out as... Minato um, is using his flying Rajin kunais to um, to <laughs> to fight Orochimaru, and Naruto concentrates as he manages to teleport to one of Minato's flying kunai flying Rajin marks, and Naruto appears within uh, the barrier. Now Orochimaru is shocked at this because he's like, "How did he get in here?" And then he realizes, "Um." Naruto can use a, f a flying Raijin um, mark. And Naruto's like, huh, well, if it isn't Orochimaru, father, I know exactly how to deal with him. As, um, not, Minato just nods. As Orochimaru's like, damn it, that kid again. And now with Minato here, it's gonna be very troublesome. But I'll just be careful. I won't fall for whatever Genjutsu or whatever that freezing thing was he did to me earlier. And Naruto just extends his hand with uh, Orochimaru trying to dodge, but little does he know, that's not quite how this works, as suddenly he freezes, and he can't move. Naruto's eyes turn a completely pale color as, once again, this mysterious aura surrounds him, and using his full power, he freezes Orochimaru. Orochimaru tries to move, but Naruto using all his strength, still manages to hold him in place, as Minato says, thanks, this will be easy, as he, uh, he creates a clone, and uses the Reaper Death Seal with that clone, completely managing to seal away Orochimaru's soul, this means that unless Kabuto gets that mask thing, and frees uh, Orochimaru's soul from the Reaper and then revives him. He he's not coming back to life for a really long time, right? Um, and the Sound 4 try to come in and help Orochimaru, seeing that he's about to die, but that's no use since Minato, after killing uh, Orochimaru, they just deal with them too. And with that, the Konoha crush ends in a miserable and embarrassing complete failure for Orochimaru and the Sand Village who were being manipulated by Orochimaru. Now, uh, after this, it's just like, oh, okay, well, it's on. Now, uh, Naruto never actually has to go search for Tsunade, because first of all, they already have a Hokage that's really good, and that Hokage is still alive after the Konoha crush, and also, there are nearly no casualties. So, they don't actually need Tsunade. Although, Minato probably does eventually go to find Tsunade during Naruto's three-year training. That is something that's gonna happen later, which is a perfect transition to Naruto's three-year time skip. So, obviously, during this time skip, Naruto is gonna do, well, three years worth of training. Now, normally Naruto went with Jiraiya, but this time it's going to be a lot different because he's going to be training with a lot of different people at a lot of different times to completely maximize this time he has and learn as much as possible. First, he trains with Shisui, just completely mastering everything he's got and, you know, like getting really really good right um then training with minato he also manages to increases the amount of flying rujai rujai raijin marks he can use because normally he could only use one at a time but now he can use like a, a bunch just like minato at least at least like five right let's say he can use up to five um and not only that but he also went to train with jiraiya and gained a bit of control over the nine tails with the help of minato because he also has the nine tails still within him and uh also learn sage mode because guess what um 
J Jiraiya can teach Naruto Sage Mode, and if Naruto and the original could are learn it in one week, this Naruto can learn it in three years. Like he has three years to learn something that in orig in the original he learned in one week. So I feel like it's only reasonable that he does learn it, and he also learns the Resen Shuriken. Now I'm gonna skip back to uh, the whole uh, Sage Mode thing. And while Naruto is trying to learn Sage Mode, you know, he finally manages to do it as he opens his eyes and um, it's the yellow Sage Mode eye with the uh, black line inside of it. As Jirai uh, is like, wow, Naruto, you did it. That was incredibly fast that you learned it. And Naruto's like, yeah, but I don't know. This power, it's great, but it almost feels as if I can go a step higher. And Jirai's like, what do you mean? And Naruto says, hush, be quiet. As Naruto sits back down and starts concentrating, closing his eyes, and suddenly his... Uh, this entire aura starts surrounding him as Naruto starts giving off an incredible amount of energy as he concentrates and concentrates and concentrates until a huge burst of energy comes off of him as he opens his eyes once more. And now, instead of their um, normal yellow color, his sage mode eyes look a little something uh, like the Tensei Gun, but a little bit more pale, uh, with, uh, with the Sage Mode line inside of it. As Jiraiya looks at Naruto's eyes and the immense aura coming off of him, she's like, Naruto, what have you done? And Naruto's like, I don't know, but this power, it's like nothing I've ever felt before as naruto looks around he can see so many things this this eye that he has basically first of all lets him see everything in slow motion right like somebody's trying to punch you he can perceive that in slow motion not only that his eyes also let him see into the future so uh for example uh if Sasuke is about to do a fireball jutsu. He sees he's gonna do that fireball jutsu before Sasuke even does it, right? So Naruto, uh, Naruto's eyes are very broken, and not so. This is Naruto's time sage mode, and um, and Naruto's like, I, this, wait gives me an idea as he bites his thumb and puts it into the ground and he says summoning jutsu and suddenly a dragon appears this dragon is a huge dragon and it's it has this pale but slightly light blue uh hue and naruto looks at it and he's like yo this power is amazing and the dragon looks at him and says is that you, the Time Sage, at last, you are back. The last time uh, I saw the time, a Time Sage was eons ago. I can't believe it. Finally, a new master, as Naruto's like, just looking at this dragon, he's like, Yo, this is so OP. And not only this, but... Using time sage mode, he masters a bunch of crazy new time abilities that basically give him almost a complete control over time. And not only this, but now he not only can he just control certain things uh, through time, he can control everything in a certain radius around him at the same time, which is incredibly OP. So after the three year time skip, Naruto heads back to the village as Minato's like, oh, great timing, we really need you back. Thing is, the Akatsuki are 
going to attack us and not really going to they already have first they sent Sasori and Daedara they attacked our village but we were able to deal with them other Akatsuki members have been around our village and trying to attack and we've been barely holding off but as the days pass more and more of them are gathering and if you weren't here we wouldn't stand a chance as Naruto being like and hearing this is like <laughs> don't even worry about it cuz this at me at this power now none of them stand a chance as suddenly they hear an explosion outside as Naruto looks out he's like that's them isn't it Minto's like yeah let's go and Naruto says no nope, leave this to me as he bites his thumb putting it to the ground and summons his dragon going on top of it as he soars through the skies going out to where the explosion was heard and as he looks down he sees them the Akatsuki as Naruto is like huh this will be easy as Naruto activates his time sage mode and he sees all of the Akatsuki in slow motion and all of their next moves so he's like go as his fire drag uh, his, fire, his time dragon um, blasts a huge beam of energy from out of its mouth incinerating uh, quite a few of the weaker uh, Akatsuki members and some of the paths of pain now Naruto jumps down as he says, Zawadudo, just kidding. But he freezes time in like a one, like 10, 50 meter radius around him. As most of the Akatsuki members are within this radius and get completely frozen in time. As Naruto dashes from one Akatsuki member to the other, um, just destroying all of them and using Rasengans and other moves, just completely. <laughs> easily destroying them now this is when obito comes in and he tries to attack naruto from behind but naruto doesn't uh doesn't get phased at all as he literally lets obito stab him and uh obito seeing this is in shock as he's like wait why isn't he moving as Obito goes around him and Obito just pulls the black rod out of his back and stabs it into uh, Obito uh, But Obito manages to use Kami just in time as Naruto's like, huh, good try as he touches his body and his body reverts right back to where it was before uh, uh, Obito stabbed him basically healing himself completely after that Naruto uh, just goes over and starts killing all of the Akatsuki members except for like Obito and Nagato and seeing this Obito goes to Nagato taking his Rinnegan just before Naruto can finish him off as Naruto's like damn it what is that power you have and Obito's like huh oh, it's called well actually why should I share it with you I can just phase through your attacks it's that simple there's not much to it, as Naruto's like, huh, well, let's see about that, as Nar uh, Naruto and Obito get into a battle, with Obito trying to attack Naruto, but with Naruto's insane, like, perception, uh, especially with his new found eyes, Obito really just doesn't stand a chance, and especially after Naruto starts using his flying Raijin kutenais, it it's really Naruto has the upper hand easily and uh, Obito for uh, finally Naruto can land a good punch on Obito as Obito's like dang it as luckily his well luckily for Obito his mask didn't break but also luckily for Naruto he touched Obito which meant he's as Naruto said it's game over and Obito's like, what do you mean? And then, he froze. As Naruto slowly and dramatically walked up to him and said, Well, any last words? As he said, Oh, I forgot. You can't talk. Well, too bad. 
as he took out his kunai and sliced Obito's throat, finishing him off and then getting rid of all the bodies of the Akatsuki. He said, well, that's that, I guess. And um, with that, the Akatsuki had been dealt with, and any traces of the Akatsuki, such as Zetsu, uh, did attempt to, after, afterwards, a long time after, right, um, he did attempt to, you know, come back, reform an Akatsuki, whatever, uh, but Naruto ended up catching him, and this time found Zetsu, and was able to, well, not kill Zetsu, but first he caught him, and then he used his dragon to completely, like, incinerate Zetsu to a subatomic level, which means, well, yeah, he's dead. And, you know, Naruto became the new Hokage, uh, this time without Kakashi become the Hokage, Naruto just became the Hokage, because, well, why not? And, yeah, that that is going to be the end of this what if. If you did enjoy it, please do subscribe, because I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. But with that, that's all I've got to say, and goodbye.